new book out called Escape Artist. It's uh, by uh, Noam Scheiber, and he normally uh, writes for the uh, New Republic. And um, he is here to tell us about uh, all the different things that went on inside the Obama administration. So one of the things that we find out from the book is that it's not a black and white world, which we, of course, suspected all along. But some of the guys that we uh, have seen uh, from the outside as generally bad guys are indeed bad guys. But they had some positions that we would agree with and that they are more nuanced. Of course, they're human beings. Although, honestly, some of them are not that nuanced. Every single book has uh, had the same things to say about Tim Geithner and Peter Orzag. Peter Orzag was the budget director. And Peter Orzag was just as conservative as they get. And, you know, I, I just, as a progressive, I don't agree with him on his budget priorities, on cutting entitlements, which I think are disastrous, et cetera. And on Tim Geithner, it's even worse. At every turn, protected the banks, protected the banks. Every source inside the White House agrees. So those guys are a little bit black and white. And Geithner's worse because, hey, look, you could be a conservative on policy matters, and I disagree with you. But I don't think there's a good rationale for, oh, let me protect the banks at all costs. No strings attached. It's one thing if you say, I'm going to save the banks, but I got to put preconditions on it so they don't screw us again. It's another thing to say, I'm going to save the banks, I'm just going to give them trillions of dollars and not ask for anything in return. That's ne either total and utter negligence or he's doing it on purpose to help the bankers. So Orzag and Geithner don't get helped by, these, by this book at all, as they have not been helped by any of the books of Inside Accounts. Now, Larry Summers is a person who is shown as doing some horrific things. So for example, um, when Christina Romer comes in, and all the previous reporting was that she wanted to push for $1.2 trillion in st stimulus spending, it turns out that's not true. She actually wanted $1.8 trillion. So the way that the process worked is she went and asked for $1.8 trillion to Larry Summers. And Larry Summers said, oh, no, that's unrealistic. Get out of here. No, uh, give me a, a more realistic number. She goes back and reworks it and goes, OK, fine. Here's $1.2 trillion. Larry Summers goes, thank you very much. And he goes to the president. And the maximum he submits is $800 million. So what happened? Well, he pared down her proposal down after she had already pared it down. So somehow we went up for, instead of 1.6 trillion to half that, I'm sorry, 1.8 trillion to less than half of that at 800 uh, billion dollars. So why did he do that? Here's an interesting quote from the book. He had a view that you don't ever want to be seen as losing. So don't ask for a, a nickel more than you want or you think you can get, I should say. Because if you ask for a nickel more and you don't get it, you'll seem like a loser. Oh, what a wrong way to play politics. <laughs> Republicans ask for the moon and the stars and the Milky Way and the entire universe. And then Republicans will go, okay, all right, take Earth and the sun and you know, eight other planets and we'll take Pluto and we're not even sure that's a planet. But hey, we don't seem like losers because we only asked for Pluto. No, you gave away the entire star system, you schmuck. So it, that's terrible. And Summers doesn't even, and in fact, this is where the nuance comes in. Rahm Emanuel didn't even know what Romer's real proposal was. Emanuel and Obama assumed that, they, that, the, you know, that the 800 billion was like near the top of what they could ask for, because that's what Larry Summers told them. They didn't even tell him about the other proposals. He was so bad on that. But interestingly enough, Larry Summers actually opposed two things including Deficit Reduction Commission, which was a disaster proposed by Orzak. That's when we wanted to cut Social Security, Medicare, et cetera, and cut taxes for the rich. So Summers was on the right side of that. And he um, pushed back against the domestic spending freeze. And it, this is really interesting. At some point, Summers apparently told people, hey, remember, we're supposed to be Democrats. Like, even Summers remembered at some point, oh, yeah, right, we're Democrats. Why are we doing domestic spending freeze? Which, by the way, President Obama did implement. He did not listen to Summers on that one occasion when he was right, and he listened to Orzak. Oy. So it gets worse and worse. Um, by the way, to give you a sense of how wrong they were on their political calculations, when they uh, submitted the stimulus plan to the Senate, they thought that they were going to get 15 Democratic senators, I'm sorry, Republican senators to sign it. 15? How naive were you? They eventually got three after massive concessions. 
after they took the 800 billion and said, all right, fine, we'll make it a third of it in tax cuts, which didn't help the economy, and which was exactly a Republican proposal. So they gave away all this stuff after they'd given away one trillion to begin with internally, and they thought in return they were going to get 15 senators. <laughs> they got three. So it gave me a sense that my, these guys really, there's no, again, for the millionth time, there's no three dimensional chess. They really were naive going in. Like, oh, well, of course the Republicans will work with us. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and they still think that from time to time. Well, you're going to find out why in a second, too. In fact, one of the other uh, guys that I had hope in, looking from the outside, because we didn't know much about him, and I figured somebody inside the White House has got to be a progressive, it was David Plouffe, who, uh, of course, ran Obama's campaign. Turns out, nope, wrong again, Bob, not a progressive. Uh, here's one quote from the book. Uh, he wanted uh, to cut entitlements the most, Plouffe did. So you're like, oh, Jesus. And he says, quote, sure, this would enrage the party's base, but the political upside with the rest of the country would more than make up for it. So do you get that? And they're like, ah, does, if it really hurts the middle class, if it hurts retirees, who cares? I made a political calculation. And uh, shockingly, as usual, the Obama ad administration making the political calculation that screwing over their own base is the brilliant way to go. So telling in so many different ways. And then here's a White House colleague quoted about Pluff. Quote, Pluff is pretty big on accomplishments, Trump normal politics. So if we can say that we had an accomplishment, which is to agree with Republicans to devastate entitlements, well, that would be such a big accomplishment that it would trump, quote unquote, normal politics. So look at the mindset. The mindset is, if we give in to the Republicans enough, if we do enough things that are pro-Republican, that that'll seem bold and brilliant. How did these guys win the election in the first place? By the way, a, a tacit admission that they're wrong is that now the president is running for re-election, all of a sudden, he's a progressive lion. What happened to all these brilliant political ideas? Turns out you were wrong, right? When you actually need the votes, all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, they tax. I don't want tax cuts for the rich, I want to increase taxes on the rich. Oh yeah, I want to stick out for the middle class, the 99%. Well, what happened? You were going to cut their entitlement, you were going to cut Social Security and Medicare. That was your brilliant idea. But here comes, I think, in some ways the most devastating one. Obama generally believed the way to pass his program was to engage earnestly with the opposition, not take his case to the public. How often have we told you this on the Young Turks for the last three years? You got to make your case. If you don't make your case, how are you going to win? It turns out when you actually interview inside administration officials, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, that was Obama's brilliant idea. Let's not make our case to the public. Let's just work earnestly with the Republicans. It was not a brilliant plan. He's just flat out wrong. And that's not something that you could argue with. Well, even if you're a massive Obama supporter, are you going to tell me working earnestly with the Republicans the last three years worked out for us? Are you telling me that not making your case public because you want to appeal earnestly to Republicans and hope on their, that they will deliver for you in good faith was the right strategy? No one in their right mind could possibly believe that at this moment. And we were not Monday morning quarterbacks. That's why we criticized the president because we were trying to help him get away from that wrong strategy. And he didn't listen. Said Rahm Emanuel came out and called liberals effing retarded. How brilliant do you look right now? That your brilliant strategy was appease Republicans and don't make your own case. I couldn't think of a worse political strategy. And that's how we got here.